So for those that don't know me, my name is Tommy and I'm a support worker. Weirdly enough, still support working during the lockdown, a job that I did not think was at all possible, but you know, our bosses found a way. So I got involved with the Macintosh Society through walking tours. My friend Bill and myself do weekly walking tours and I'd recently did a Macintosh themed one which Alice had heard of and was keen to meet up with me so that we could discuss doing Macintosh themed walking tours for the society. So I went to meet her at the Macintosh at the Willow and after the conversation she invited me to go on a tour of the, the tea room. I fell in love with it which I think everybody that's been into the tea room often do. <music> started off the information desk, went on to do the tours of the tea room itself and then went to do the walking tours. The most popular walking tour was the East End one, which I ended up doing with 19 people falling behind me, so that was a bit like herding cats, I can tell you. Now I'm one of these sort of people that feel that despite the fact that you've got a lot of gorgeous Macintosh pieces in the heart and centre of the city centre. There's an awful lot of places, you know, outside the city centre that don't get the same amount of attention. Like poor wee Ruck Hill, nobody seems to love it as much and it's a way out at Mary Hill. And, you know, things like Martyr School, which a lot of people don't even know exist because it's so tucked away. So I usually push people to go towards maybe the East End so they can get to see Martyr School the Necropolis and his home just at the, the back of the brewery so at least you're getting three Macintosh things for your one trip so you're getting your money's worth and they don't get as much attention so it's nice to give them that wee bit of publicity. The best bit about volunteering. I think one of the funniest stories I could tell you is a time then a mother and daughter came to visit the interactive exhibition at the back of Macintosh at the Willow. And the mother was all, all game for fun and she was having loads and loads of fun dressing up in the Victorian costumes. The daughter was mortified. And I don't quite remember how it worked out but she was game for going round the tea room itself dressed as Kate Cranston. We cleared it with the staff and Big Chief. They're like, yep, that's fine, on you go. And this lady wandered about the tea room, you know, for like a minute. Kind of talked to people going, oh, I see that you're having tea in my wonderful, beautiful tea room. It was designed by Charles Rennie Macintosh. Did you not know that? How wonderful on this. And the daughter's just kind of looking at her going, oh my God, my mother is a pure embarrassment. And really was mortified even more she thought she was before she was now so that was just a, such a laugh and it was so surreal as well <music> favorite macintosh piece this was really difficult for me because it chops and changes from a piece of furniture to a building to sometimes something that margaret mcdonald's done which isn't Macintosh, but it kind of is, it goes under that umbrella. I have chosen this, which is a piece of artwork that Charles Rennie Macintosh did for the dugout, which is part of the, the tea room in Sakeho Street. And I love it how it's got so many elements that are similar to the design that he did years before for the actual tea room, so it's still got the geometric check design, it's still got the catkin shapes, colours are matching, you've got the Glasgow Rose there as well, so there's so many familiarities there. And I think, because, but everything with the dugout, I think because there was no photographs of it and the only thing that exists was a couple of pieces of art and the architectural drawings. And I just feel that because it's not something you can physically see or touch, it tends to be forgotten about. So I like to give it that wee bit of love and, you know, kind of love everything about the dugout. I have been, apart from working, doing gym. So I've been lucky enough to have got myself a home gym 
and hopefully by the end of the workout it'll be like a gable end of a fiver but here's hoping and I've also been doing a lot of typing as well I do a lot of short stories and novels and when I was younger I used to handwrite them all so this is an opportunity for me to start typing and post lockdown I'm looking forward to getting back to roller skating used to go about four times a week and then the lockdown happened and it just cut off so I'm looking forward to that Thank you.